discussion appeared in NEET PG 2022 and it talks about an adult patient that complains of palpitation and presents with irregularly irregular pulse. The pulse deficit is 20, the heart rate is 120 per minute and the blood pressure is 110 by 70. So which of the following will be found in the patient? And your options are absent A wave, canon A wave, prominent A wave or prominent This is a very very important question from a super important topic that is jugular venous pressure and uh, if you see jugular venous pressure basically both external and internal jugular veins they empty into the right atrium so if we you know measure the pressure of these uh, jugular veins we will have an idea about the you know pressure in the right atrium and this pressure can be increased or decreased in a lot of different you know conditions cardiac conditions and so we can have an idea of the pathology that is existing. So that is why jugular venous pressure measurement becomes very very important and in fact it's more important clinically because the external jugular vein you can see. So a lot of these conditions you can actually see the changes in the pressure of the external jugular vein and based on that you can have some you know idea about the diagnosis of the case. Now let's look at what kind of graph we get when we measure the jugular venous pressure. So what we can see here is you know there is this ascent which leads to a peak formation that is called as A wave or A peak. Then it starts falling down. At some point of again another peak is formed that is C peak. Then again it falls down till it reaches a bottom. And this descent is called as X descent. Okay. The falling down. Again it will rise up, lead to another peak formation or wave formation that is called as V wave. And again it will fall down. And this is called as Y. So what we are seeing is there are three peaks A, C and B and there are two descents X descent and Y descent. So when we are going to understand JVP, first we will look at what causes these three waves, what causes these two descents, what is the physiology behind it and then we will look at in what conditions which of these peaks or which of these descents are you know affected so that we can have an idea of the pathology behind that particular disease okay so let's look at the a wave so what is going to happen when the atria is filled okay then what will happen it will start contracting to push the blood from right atrium to the right ventricular so when this contraction happens when the right atrium will contract the pressure in the right atrium will increase and this is what will cause your first peak or first wave that is called as A wave. So let's write it down. A wave is because of right atrium contraction. Okay. So once the atrium has contracted completely, it has sent all the blood into the right ventricular, then it will start relaxing. And when it is relaxing, the pressure in the right atrium will start falling down and this will be to your X Okay. So, X descent is because of right atrium relaxation. But interestingly, while there is a relaxation and falling of the pressure in the right atrium, at somewhere in the middle, there is a small P that is called as the C wave. Why does the C wave happen? So, we know that between right atrium and right ventricular, there is a valve that is called as tricuspid valve. Okay. So when the right ventricular starts contracting, okay, what will happen? This tricuspid valve is closed, but it will start bulging towards the right, you know, atrium. So if this is the, you know, heart, so there will be a bulging of this tricuspid valve in the right atrium, and this bulging will increase the pressure in the right atrium and this is why we have got C wave. So C wave is when there is a right ventricular contraction especially in the iso you know isometric phase and this will lead to the bulging of tricuspid valve into right atrium thereby increasing the pressure in the right atrium okay and causing this C. 
Okay, so this descent has happened. Now what happens? The right ventricular has pushed all the blood into the pulmonary circulation and your right atrium now starts filling blood from the cystic circulation through you know superior vena cava, inferior vena, cava, jugular vein. So all these, so there is a slow filling up of the right atrium. So this B wave is when the right atrium is filled. So last wave, B wave is because of the filling up of right atrium. Okay. All the blood from the systemic circulation will come back to the right atrium and they, that will increase the pressure of the right atrium and that will cause the B wave or the B wave. Okay. And eventually what will happen? When the blood is filled in the right atrium, even when the before the right atrium starts to contract, you know, even before that, because of the pressure of the blood, the tricuspid valve will open and slow there will be, you know, uh, you know, the blood will start passively coming from right atrium to right ventricle. I mean, the right atrium has not started contracting. Even before its contraction, the valve opens and the blood starts coming down. So this is what is called as the wide descent. Why descent is because of the opening of the tricuspid valve. So once the tricuspid valve opens, the blood will slowly start to move from the right atrium to the right ventricle and that will lead to the decrease in the pressure of the right atrium and so the what are these So hope you are understanding. So A, C, B, B waves and two descent. So the first descent is, uh, first descent is because of the right atrial relaxation. The second descent is because of the opening of the tricuspid valve and slowly the blood from right atrium the three waves, A wave is caused by the contraction of the right atrium, C wave is when the tricuspid valve moves into the right atrium because of the contraction of the right ventricular and V, V stands for venous. Okay. So the V wave is when the venous returns from the body, comes and gets accumulated in the right atrium thereby increasing the pressure of right atrium. So if you are clear, let's, the most common question which is asked on the topic Causes of increased JVT. Very, very frequently asked question. So, I am going to list you the most important question, are, you know, causes of increased JVT, and this you should remember very, very nicely. So, the first important question, uh, you know, first two important is very easy to remember. One is pericardial fusion, and second is constricted pericardial effusion. In both these cases, pericardial effusion because of the tamponade effect and constructive, uh, constructive pericarditis, the heart is not able to expand. So if the heart is not fully right atrium uh, and right ventricle is not going to fully expand, it is going to increase, there will be increased pressure in the right ventricular and right atrium, so you know, increase it. So these two are very, very important causes of increase in the next important cause is any cause of right ventricular failure. So when the right ventricular failure is happening, so pressure, the blood will not get properly emptied into the right ventricle, it will stay in the right atrium and so your GVP will increase. Any cause where there is a superior vena cava obstruction, okay, so that will be transmitted to the uh, internal, uh, to the jugular veins and that will cause your yeah, increased GVP. And any obstruction in the right atrium. For example, a very commonly it will be right atrial myxoma. Any obstruction in the right atrium, all these are very, very important causes of increase in JVP. So, hope you understand JVP, all the three peaks and the causes of increase in JVP. Now, I am going to show you few graphs so that you know you can analyze the graph and see what is the change which is happening in this particular graph and what are the pathologies. So let's look at this. So here what is happening? A wave, B wave. So there is a prominent A wave. So this is basically your prominent or elevated A wave. What are the important 
causes of prominent or elevated AV. So one will be tricuspid stenosis. Very easy to understand. If the tricuspid wall itself is stenosis, so when the right atrium is contracting, it will not be able to, you know, so the pressure generated in the right atrium will be much higher. The second will be any cause where there is a decrease in the right ventricular compliance. What do I mean by that? What are the diseases? So the first important disease will be any cause of right ventricular failure. Any cause of pulmonary hypertension, any pulmonary valve stenosis. So, all these three conditions will cause prominent or elevated AV. Let's look at this condition. So, you have got a C wave, you have got a V wave, but there is no A wave. So, this is called as absent A wave. Seen only in cases of atrial fibrillation, atrial fibrillation, absent AVA, very very important actually. Let's look at this. So this is normal A, normal C, normal B, and what you can see is a very big AVA, also called as canon A. Again, very frequently asked in the exam, what are the causes of canon AV? And so you have to write. So if there is a complete heart block, okay, complete heart block is there, so arteria is contracting, but ventricular is not relaxing. Premature ventricular tachycardia or ventricular pacing. So these are the important causes of your canon A. Let's look at this. So A wave and V wave are equal. So A wave is equal to V wave. Okay. So when does this happen? So this will happen whenever there is hypervolemia. So there is increased filling. Whenever there is a cardiac tamponade. Because uh, even a small amount of filling will increase the pressure of the right atrium. Whenever there is arterial septal defect or you know even with uh, uh, cardiac tamponade, any cause of constrictive pericardia. So this is these are the conditions where A wave will be equal to B wave. So basically, what is happening is the B wave is increasing. What is happening here? Okay. What is happening here? So you can see here. This is the A wave, okay, and you have a elevated V wave, okay. So A wave is diminished and V wave is increased. So you have this is basically elevated or prominent V wave, okay. and prominent V wave again you can see in any case of RV failure, you can see in tricuspid regurgitation or any other cause of. Restrictive cardio myocardium. Okay. So all these you know causes for so different waves you should be able to give. They can be given as an image-based question, and you should be able to you know remember the causes of all these things. And if you understand the concept, you will be very easily able to eliminate or answer the question. Let's look at the next few conditions. So what are you seeing here? So what is this? So there is a Increase in the XTC and here there is a decrease in the XTC. Okay. So, what are the causes of increase or prominent XTC? So, two very, very important causes is ASD and any cause of cardiac tamponade. Okay. What is the cause of decreased X? Decent. So it can be seen obviously whenever A wave is missing, so arterial fibrillation can be a cause, tricuspid valve regurgitation, or some causes of right atrial shielding. So there will be a decrease in the descent of the 
you know, x decent. Let's look at what is happening here. So again, you can see the y decent is prominent. So y decent is prominent, and here you can see there is a decreased y decent. So what are the causes of y decent being prominent? So they can be seen in tricuspid regurgitation, any cause of constrictive pericarditis, ASD, and any cause of restrictive cardiomyopathy. Okay. What are the causes of decreased y descent? So remember right atrial myxoma, cardiac tamponade and tricuspid stenosis. So these are the important causes of decreased y descent. Now you can understand if you know all these pathologies, you can understand why there is a decrease you know, descent or you know there is a prominence of y descent. So these were the important, you know, uh, conditions. So what A wave prominent, you know, A canon A wave, absent A wave, A wave being equal to B wave, and increased B wave. So all these conditions: prominent X descent, prominent uh, Y descent, blunted X descent, blunted Y descent. So all these causes you have to remember. So let's come back to the question. So here, you know, we have got a irregularly irregular pulse, and there is a pulse deficit of 20. Pulse deficit is you know the number of a heart, you know, uh, heartbeat and number of pulse, peripheral pulse. Okay, so there is a deficit, pulse deficit of twenty. So this gives us, you know, the clinical diagnosis of arterial fibrillation. And we have seen that in arterial fibrillation, A wave is absent. And specifically, let me show you again. So uh, this is when you see in arterial fibrillation because the artery, the arteria. Uh, Atrium is not able to contract, so you will not get that A wave. Okay, so that is why you know absent A wave because clinically we are seeing this patient is of arterial fibrillation, so absent A wave will be the correct answer. Now this is a super important topic, and hope you have learned everything about it uh, uh, this, on this topic. And every year one question uh, you know, from AVB will be there.